Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back to Aircraft Structures 1. Uh, this is Professor Anup Ghosh from Aerospace Engineering Department IIT Kharagpur. We are in the continuation of 8th week lecture. Uh, this is the 40th lecture in that sequence. Today we will uh, try to solve uh, problems uh, related to torsion of an elliptical bar. Uh, this is very interesting problem. This uh, shows uh, the mathematical way of how the warping takes place. We have talked about warping in the, in the last two lectures. I have shown you drawing figures also, but uh, in this particular case for rectangular uh, bar, I have shown you how the warping takes place. We have done experiments and uh, we have seen observed those things. We do regularly that type of experiments as a, a regular lab of, uh, of BTEC students uh, and with that note, uh, we will proceed further to solve today's uh, problem. Uh, in this, uh, before we go into solving the problems, what we will do, we will go for a recapitulation as it is listed there. Today, I will not discuss much about uh, what we have done. I will try to simply read it. History of aircraft and aerospace structural analysis, various types of external loads, conceptual structural details we have covered. We have also come across a flight envelope and different load factors experienced by different types of aircrafts, why it is different, how it is different, all those things we have di discussed. We have drawn bending moment shear force diagram considering typical uh, loading. Unit load method we have used, uh, we have considered those things and solved, found out the shear force bending moment diagram. Then we have uh, come to the three dimensional structures uh, or the space structures, solved a few problem related to um, landing gear. Then energy methods we have solved different problems, not only determinate, indeterminate problems also we have solved, found out indeterminate reactions, uh, redundant forces. And then uh, in that method, we have come across to unit load method, dummy load method and other methods uh, related to Rayleigh Ridge method. Rayleigh Ridge method is really very, very important one and we, we follow those in, in further derivation or further numerical processes. Then we have learned uh, the stress elasticity approach, elasticity approach of solving problems. Uh, I have already said many times why theory of elasticity is so important. Uh, in a brief, we can say unless we learn the theory of elasticity approach of solving a problem, it is difficult to have a insight into the development of stresses and strains inside a body while it is loaded. Unless we have the insight, it is difficult to predict catastrophic situations or failures and those criteria. So, that is the reason we need to study the theory of elasticity approach and we, we have covered those things. Uh, one very, very important problem we have uh, solved uh, in a week long session that is the circular hole stress due to a circular hole on a plate while it is loaded uniaxially even in biaxial nature. We have seen if the hole is elect elliptical how it changes. And in the last two lectures, what is not listed here, we have developed equations uh, to solve torsion of cylindrical bodies. It is not considered, we will, our approach is not considering the section as circular. And at the end of this lecture, we will come to the section as circular and we will conclude that uh, how it is uh, conforming to the usual solution. With that note, We, we proceed further and uh, torsion of an elliptical bar is the problem what we will be solving today. So, 
with that the problem what we will be solving is an elliptical section having A is semi major axis and B is semi minor axis. Let us consider a bar with an elliptical cross section under the action of free torsion. Again free torsion is there as we have said unless it is free torsion warping is difficult to observe and that is the reason warping has been introduced and has been observed here. If A and B are the semi major and semi minor, minor axis respectively of the ellipse, the equation of the equal elliptical boundary is given by x square by a square plus y square by b square minus 1 is equals to 0, it is quite well learned. Again, since phi must be a constant on the boundary, we can assume for it an equation of the form what is equal to similar to the equation of the ellipse. So, phi is equals to a constant m multiplied by the x square by a square plus y square by b square minus 1. So, um, phi as we have defined in the last slide from equilibrium equation if you substitute this what do we have del 2 phi del y 2 plus del 2 phi del x 2 is equals to constant as we have seen and that constant uh, we get the value of m it is simple rearrangement we have done and if we substitute back to that the phi takes the form as it is said a square plus b square by 2 i is a square plus b square multiplied by f and the remaining portion is part of the ellipse equation. The value of S f is determined by the use of boundary condition. So, that boundary condition whatever we have uh, earlier stated, we have not derived this, but it can be derived from the boundary condition surface forces boundary condition easily. So, if we put the value of phi here and we carry out uh, write the equations uh, in a segmented manner. What do we have? We have x square by a square dx dy, y square by b square dx dy and this is minus dx dy. So, if we these terms are quite familiar is not it? If you try to remember we will find that this you have already solved as area moment of inertia. So, we know from the previous calculations that the moment of inertia of the cross section about y axis is x square by del dx dy that is i y. Similarly, this is y square dx dy is i i x integration definitely is there and, and integration dx dy is equals to the area. So, now if we if we find the integration of these things. So, i x is equals to pi a cube b by 4, i i y is equals to pi a cube b by 4, i x is equals to pi a b cube by 4 and a is pi a b as we know. So, with that note we, we come to a simple solution for t uh, and we write that f may be written as minus twice t a square plus b square by pi a cube b cube. So, now we have one more expression for the a earlier we had an expression with respect to theta. Now, from the boundary conditions implementation what we have the expression of f the constant as in terms of t. So, easily we can correlate those two. So, but it is not done here it may be done later. So, the stress function may be then written as minus t by pi a b x square plus by a square plus y square by b square minus 1 is equals to this. Now, once we have the stress function uh, in terms of the applied torsion, so we can easily find out the um, shear stress, shear stress experienced by a particular section. So, uh, as I mentioned z along x, z along y del phi del y and we simply solve, take derivative of this uh, you can easily do I think and uh, what do we get is minus t y by twice i x. Similarly, for the other direction in the y direction in the z plane the shear stress is t x by twice i y.
So, to have some discussion with respect to the shear stresses as we have seen. So, uh, if we look at uh, the expression along with the uh, along the x axis and y equals to 0, we find that uh, that means, if we follow this axis what do we have since y is equals to 0 the y expression if you look into the previous uh, slide you will find that tau z x is equals to 0 and tau z y is having some value. So, if we try to draw it here we have only value may be increasing linearly y because it is a function of x. And this value is the maximum value what do we have if we substitute x is equals to a we have this value is twice t by pi square b. And we do not have the other component z x is missing in this direction there is no shear stress, shear stress is acting only in this direction. And the maximum value is plus minus this because one may be this direction the other may be in the other direction that is the reason it is said plus minus this. Similarly, at x equals to n and x equals to minus a up to this is this one. So, similarly along the y axis uh, the x is equals to 0 if we follow this line x is equals to 0 what do we have again we have that this is equals to minus. So, if it is equals to minus we can have And this value is the maximum value that is twice t by pi a b square. Okay. So, that is what at the plus minus even here also we will have. So, with that note uh, we observe that for an elliptical section at the boundary the stresses are not same. It is different and uh, it is not that every point there are tau x z x as well as tau y z in between any point if you consider whatever may be the point we have values tau z x as well as tau z y. I think I have written wrong. Z x and tau z y. So, with that note and with the distribution of uh, shear stress this is very very important understanding in my opinion. Uh, we will proceed further for this type of solution what else we have uh, to see to have some insight. So, unless uh, I repeat unless it is on this line there are shear stress components both tau z x as well as tau z y. And with that note uh, we proceed further to solve or observe other properties. Since A is greater than B as drawn we find that the maximum value of shearing stress will occur at the ends of the minor axis of the ellipse. So, from the expressions easily you can say one is uh, what is the expression? Uh, one is 2 t pi a square by b, the other is 2 t pi a b square. Since a is larger, this value is more that is what is said. 
So, the amplitude here will be more whereas, amplitude here will be less. The drawing what I drawn last time probably showing the same amplitude, but it is not the same amplitude. What we have is that to notice that we find that the maximum value of shearing stress will occur at the ends of the minor axis of the ellipse. So, the maximum value will occur at this place or at this place, this point, this point. The resultant value of tau at any point in the cross section is given by it is as usual it is very easy formality formula to observe and we have the resultant value as given here as 2 i is t by pi a b over square root of y square by b to the power 4 plus x square by a to the power 4 which indicates that the value of tau is constant and correspond to a family of ellipse. So, family of ellipse means where this the a by a b ratio is maintained and there is a relations uh, which which satisfies this re equation in those ellipse it is uh, constant all resultant sharing stress is constant. So, with that note uh, we proceed further. To determine the unit angular twist of any torsional moment, we make use of the equations as we have done earlier. F equals to minus 2 g theta and uh, then if we put that what we have as I mentioned in the previous uh, um, slide that there we got expression with f with respect to t and uh, put it to find out phi here we are putting the, the same value and getting the equations for theta. Theta is equals to T by G j effective where from the j effective is coming. We are in it is quite known that theta is equals to 2 by G j, j is the polar moment of inertia of the section. Now, but in this elliptical case what we observe that j effective or in this e from this equation the j effective is having some different value that is pi a cube b cube by divided by a square plus b square. And whereas, if we find out the usual way of a polar moment of inertia of that particular section of ellipse as we have described earlier with semi major axis as a and semi minor axis as b, we get the expression something like this, it, this is written in a special way to cancel out a few terms. So, if you take a ratio of this and this what do we have is equals to 4 a square b square divided by a square plus b square whole square. And let us try to observe what happens if we assume j is e, j p or equal is equals to j effective. To study that uh, if with respect to the variation of a and b we have prepared a plot it is available in almost all good books. So, with that uh, what is that plot we have plotted the j effective by j p in the y axis and in the x axis we have plotted the ellipse uh, semi major and semi minor axis ratio that is a by b as it is pointed out here. So, what do we see if it is 1 that means, it is a circular section in that particular case there is no change of this value the ratio that ratio is equals to 1. But as it becomes the ellipse there is a considerable change of this value at some point while uh, the a by b is equals to 5 or it is very very uh, slender or thin ellipse if we talk about in that particular case it is uh, the value is about 0.2 here about say about say 4.25 or somewhere it is about 0.2 and that is a considerable change in value of j p and uh, definitely there will be a considerable sorry considerable change in the 
tau as well as theta. But uh, a simple observation you can see that what is happening the j effective is increasing that is the reason we get the value in fraction. So, as it becomes uh, more elliptic from the circular uh, the j effective value is increasing and from there the theta value is decreasing. If we look at that manner what is happening if the torsion applied torsion remains same uh, the angle of twist reduces right. So, with that note uh, we proceed further. Now, to find out the displacement. So, to find out displacement the deformation u and v may be obtained by means of the equations already you have we have found out. Now, it is time to replace only the value of theta T y g g j effective is put there here also it is put it is integrated. Once we integrate it uh, again del w del x is brought back uh, in relation to the standard way what we have seen the equations and then what we, we get that w is equals to f 1 of y because it is partial derivative of x and similar way if we go for the w uh, from this equation we have a function of x since it is derivative with respect to y. So, now it is interesting to note that in both the cases it is expressing w and to have a reasonable solution from mathematical point of view uh, w must be equal for both values of x and y we can state set that f 1 y and f 2 x are equals to 0. But w is a unique number it is not having a different value at the for different uh, position of x y. So, for any value of x y since this, this w both the functions are, are certain to lead to a same value the values of f 1 and f 2 f 1 y and f 2 x are equals to 0 and we get that w which is along this axis. So, if I consider uh, a better to have some conforming relation if this is x if this is x this is y this is z. So, this is the x y plane and w is in this direction. Now, uh, one more thing you should notice here uh, it sometimes it is confusing I have tried to draw it as clearly as I can it is digital drawing becomes difficult. So, let me give you some uh, try to explain the figure as far as I can. So, the initial state of the section is given by this line am I right yes I am this is the section which is not stressed or which is not experiencing any torsion. But as soon as there is a torsion applied uh, what is happening we observe that there is a out of plane displacement and this point goes inside corresponding this point comes out. Similarly, this point goes inside this point comes out. So, as I showed you in case of, of a rectangular cross section the some opposite corners go up and the opposite corners go down. 
In a similar manner, if we see that this side, this side is going down, this side is also going down, okay. it's, it's going in this direction, it is going in this direction, whereas this side is coming out, this side is coming out. So, this is a nice uh, phenomena uh, unless you do experiment, unless you observe the section, it is uh, difficult to imagine, difficult to um, probably experience uh, using this formula, but it happens, we have seen to happen, it is exciting phenomena. So, we, if you carry out experiment, uh, elliptical section is difficult to find out, that is the reason uh, we always uh, prefer to carry out experiment with rectangular section. If you do rectangular sex section experiment, I would suggest that you do, draw parallel lines on the section before you give it for torsion. And then at the end uh, of the, at the end of the uh, experiment while the specimen has failed, you please observe that it will uh, take the shape as we have described as we have got in case of elliptical section. So, with this note uh, of uh, warping, it is very, very nice function phenomena, uh, we proceed to the next slide. For the circular bar where A is equals to B is equals to R, so we come back to the simplified solution considering A and B are equals and is equals to R and we will try to see observe that the derivation whatever we have done that also holds for a circular section that is what is done A is equals to B is equals to R is put here and the tau resultant shear stress if we put those values is equals to T R by j and the theta is t by g j and j effective is also equals to j and it is equals to 1. And we have u is equals to minus of t by g j y z and v is equals to t by g j x z w is equals to 0. It can be shown that the circular cylinder either hollow or solid is the only shape in which the true geometric value of j may be used and in which there is no warping of cross section. Furthermore, only in circular cylinder does the resultant shearing stress act perpendicular to the radius vector and is directly proportional to the distance from the center of the circle. So, the resultant as we have seen that there are two components always tau z x and tau z y unless it is lying on the axis. So, definitely it is the resultant is not going to be perpendicular to the radius. So, that is what is concluded in this portion and we observe that particular phenomena. So, with that note we come to the end of the torsion problem of elliptical section we will solve uh, a few more if time permits. So, uh, these are the standard reference what we see and with this uh, reference uh, we go to the next slide what we have learned today learned uh, that uh, torsion of elliptical section and not only elliptical section we have got some insight uh, towards the warping phenomena and uh, we have seen uh, solutions conforming to the circular section also. So, with that note I thank you for attending the lecture, uh, we will see you later. Thank you.